Oh, hey. I was just in standby mode. Uh, anyway, hello kids. I have a fun educational video for you today filled with happiness and joy. None of the sad, depressed things I've been giving you. What does trains, pangolins, and the Ottoman Empire have in common? That's right. Genocide! Oh, God damn it, why? Before I start, I just need to clarify one thing. I like trains. Hell, I love trains. They are the best way of getting from point A to point B, aside from, of course, legs. Uh, I'm sorry to anyone who doesn't have legs. Singapore's train system is undeniably one of the most impressive in the world, as long as you don't count that blue colored piece of shit. It is designed in such a way that each station services a range of buses and walkability. Public transport accessibility is great. In fact, convenience in public transport access is one of the best way to reduce traffic and carbon emission. I suggest the channels not just by Strong Town, Climate Town and City Beautiful. If you want to learn more about transportation and just city design in general. But problems can arise if we focus too much on convenience instead of cost. The idea of building a station is to make sure that it can service an area of walkability to allow access to the rest of the train lines. A bad idea of building a station would be to have two stations overlap in their area of service because train stations are like roads. Like roads and all other infrastructure, building train station means taking up space for something else. For example, this is the site of the future Tech Gi MRT station of the Cross Island Line. You want to build a station like this just far enough from other stations so that it can service as many people as possible for the least amount of space, without it being too nearby that it overlaps with another train station service area. And being between a park and a shopping hub means space here is scarce. Which is why it's so confusing that this train station in Taggi is within a 10 minutes walk of three other stations. Like, why? Why? In fact, it's within three bus stops of another fourth station. It's so close to Ang Mokyo Station that I can get there by rolling on the floor. If you just go up to a nearby flat, you can see the other stations with your eyes. Like, this, this station is it's so useless. Like, whose idea was that? Who However, this isn't the only problem with the Cross Island Line. In fact, there's another far more devastating issue. The construction of the tunnel between Turf City and Bright Hill will be running under the Central Catchment Nature Reserve. And this is where the pangolins come in. The Nature Reserve houses over 300 different animals, including the critically endangered Sunda pangolin. Singapore is one of the last few places left where any pangolins are even found. There are only 8 species of pangolins left in the entire world and all of them are threatened with extinction. This guy, this cute little guy is critically endangered. And this is bad for everyone because the pangolins are incredibly vital to our ecosystem, especially in a rainforest climate like Singapore. A single one of these cute little fucks eats 200,000 ants and termites every year. They save us millions of dollars in pest destruction, and our trains are on the verge of threatening their very existence. The problem comes from many things, the construction of the station and tunnels, the vibration from trains that will be travelling in the line later, the unintended cascade of environmental changes that comes from the process. But for today, I'm just gonna focus on the construction because honestly that's bad enough. All animals have a certain vibrational tolerance that we can handle before it starts affecting us. Our mood, our behavior, our bodies, our sex drive. Uh, ground vibration is measured in something called PPV. Peak Particle Velocity. The area around Windsor Nature Park, where one of the construction sites will be, has baseline PPV of around 0.07 mm per second. For humans, we start complaining at 1 mm per second and the vibration becomes intolerable at 10. 
To give an example, 1 mm per second is about the same as a car driving by. A jackhammer is about 30 to 50 mm per second. For animals who are far, far more sensitive, the scales are much lower. Anything higher than 0.35 mm per second is already annoying for them. Higher than 2.5 will cause trouble to their behaviors and physical well-being. At 5 mm per second, smaller animals might just outright die from the vibration. Considering that most construction sites can hit up to 15 mm per second on average easily, it doesn't look good. Even though there will only be two construction sites within the range of the reserve, the vibration from those two sites alone will still affect over 500 square meters of biodiverse land. Now this next part is my personal opinion and may be a little hyperbolic, but looking at the numbers myself, I can't find a reason to think otherwise. We are risking the genocide of a species so that we can have trains. Even after the tunnels are finished in 2032, even so far underground, we're still not sure how the vibration of the trains will forever damage the reserve. I, I think that's insane. Now, you might be thinking, why don't we just bring the pangolins into a zoo or something and keep them there? That's because Sunda pangolins are notoriously difficult to breed in captivity. Less than 8% of them were ever bred in captivity anywhere. With the construction taking 10 years to complete, we are looking at the potential end of an entire generation of these creatures. Imagine if the entire country of Singapore started undergoing construction at the same time for 50 years and almost everyone just stops fucking because of the noise. Unless that's like your very specific kink, I doubt anyone's gonna get pregnant. And this isn't something that we couldn't have avoided. There were other options available that we just chose not to do. We could have redirected the train lines through residential area, but that would have caused noise pollution to us, the people, and the people who are going to benefit from the stations. We can't have the benefit if we also have to suffer the consequences, so we'll let those damn dirty animals suffer the consequences. And the Sunda pangolin isn't the only conservation important animal that will be impacted by this. The crested gold shark, the spotted wood owl, the tiny seer tail dragonfly, the lesser mouse deer, the horse feel flying squirrel, the straw headed bulbul. Bull. I swear I am not making these names up even though they all sound like something I would name my penis. And the plants, they are so so many plant species that are being affected by this as well. We don't need those train stations. I live in the area that will benefit from these stations and I'm telling you I don't need those stations. And don't get me wrong, the conservationists and researchers and scientists and engineers working on this have done a lot to mitigate the damage. They are doing tremendously difficult work to save the lives of thousands of plants and animals that will otherwise be ignored against incredible political pressure. But everything they've come up with so far are just band-aids. They're not real solutions because even with everything we're doing, we might still lose up to a dozen different types of plants and animals vital to the ecosystem or are rare in the region. Here's the real solution. Don't. Don't build the tunnels. It's fine. We don't need it. If we really want to increase public transport, stop expanding the roads for cars. This is a topic for a whole nother video, but every lane we add for cars is one less lane or space we can use to, I don't know, walk or bike? Add more buses. We've got electric buses now, those are cool. Maybe we can have trams, holy shit, that would be great. They're like trains, but with an M, and you can plant grass around them to make it look nice and reduce noise pollution, and they don't require us to kill cute little endangered animals. Listen, this is our fault. We didn't pay attention. We knew this was happening years ago and we just didn't care. 
I'm part of the problem too. I didn't know this was a thing until this September and now it might be too late. Because the construction is going to start next year. If you want to try to stop this from happening or even prevent things like this from happening in the future, we need to engage in actual informed discourse. Call your MPs, go to town halls and tell them how you feel about this. Don't just complain about stuff that only happens to you personally or wait until things are too late. In my last video about Singapore's flag, which unexpectedly got over 2,000 views. Thanks for watching by the way. But that video showed a real problem with how we have discourse in this country. In the comments and on social media and Reddit, one of the most common things said was along the line of, it doesn't affect me, so why should I care? And yeah, most things don't affect you. That's how the world works. But if you're not a self-centered, narcissistic, apathetic monster, you should still care. Why are we building these stations? Why are we causing such irreversible damage to our environment just for a few minutes of our travel time? Why are we such stale drips? Can we please try to be a little bit better? Can we try to just care a little bit more about the world around us instead of being a society of self-centered assholes? Killing pangolins so we can travel a few minutes faster? Really? Like, really? Can we just stop and actually care for things that is not just about you? Please? Fine. We'll just wait for Mother Nature to rise up and kill us all. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. That video is really fun and filled with knowledge and not depressing at all. <laughs> oh god, it's so, so bad. I've linked all my sources down below if you need to check things out. I've also linked to some uh, conservation group that can help if you want to contribute. Uh, I can't remember the names off the top of my head. I will put them here somewhere, maybe here. I have a Patreon, you can check it out down below in the description. And yeah, I will see you next time with a hopefully not as depressing story. Bye!